Uh, welcome to the webinar uh, being hosted by ICASO and ICAT at the IAS. Um, this is being recorded in advance and after the recording, which you'll hear from our partners about their program, you'll be able to ask specific questions in the chat box and we'll be able to have a more uh, in-depth discussion with participants. It's a really great pleasure on behalf of ICASO, the International Coalition on Aid Service Organizations, to host this at, at our booth at the Global Village and to uh, welcome our partners in Zimbabwe, Kisue Kis Sisterhood and Youth Engage, both of whom are working with ICAD and ICASO on a program funded by the Government of Canada through the Small and Medium-Sized Organizations Fund. This program is just getting going and we're really excited to be able to share what the expectations are in this program and to be able to answer some questions. So I'll turn it over to our colleague, Robin Montgomery, who's the Executive Director of ICAD. Hi everyone and welcome to our, our live webinar. Um, looking forward to our discussion today. As Michael O'Connor was mentioning, this is um, a partnership initiative that has been growing together between our Canadian and our Zimbabwean partners from the very beginning, looking at the intersections of sexual and reproductive health and rights, gender equality and HIV prevention. Um, within uh, Zimbabwe, targeting and looking at adolescent girls and young women. Um, we look forward to hearing from our partners and thanks very much for viewing us. Great, thanks so much, uh, Michael and Robin. My name's Gemma Oberth, I'm here uh, in Cape Town, South Africa, so right next door to our friends in Zimbabwe. Um, I'm a, a policy advisor with ICASO. I'm gonna be your moderator for this session. So I'm just going to start with a, a short background about the context in which this uh, program is being implemented. So if we look at the HIV epidemic among adolescent girls and young women in Zimbabwe, um, the highest rates of new HIV infections are among this group, um, particularly among 20 to 24 year olds, uh, followed by adolescent girls aged 15 to 19. Among this group, uh, the rate of new infections, the incidence is about eight times higher among girls than it is among boys. So this really points to the gender disparity and the underlying inequalities that are, that are fueling the epidemic. Um, and so some of these factors include very limited HIV knowledge. Um, so less than half um, of 15 to 20 year olds have, have correct knowledge of, of HIV and reject major myths. Uh, we have high rates of teenage pregnancy in Zimbabwe, 24% among adolescent girls. High rates of child marriage as well, 13% nationally and nearly 30% in the rural areas among adolescents. High rates of sexual violence, something this project is really targeting. Um, about one in three 18 to 24 year olds have had an experience with sexual violence before the age of 18. Um, and issues with, with low school attendance as well, about one in five girls is currently out of school. So this is the context in which we're working in and some of the, the challenges we're trying to address with this project. So let's go over to Charles with Youth Engage, who's gonna tell us a little bit about the project that's just kicked off um, and what you're doing to fix all the problems I just mentioned. Over to you, Charles. Yeah, so thank you so much, Gemma, uh, for this opportunity. Uh, like Gemma has mentioned, my name is Charles Sewella. I'm the current national director for a youth focused organization called Youth Engage. So, as an organization, uh, Youth Engage advocates for the health and well being of young people. Um, at Youth Engage, we believe in youth led health interventions. So the youth led health interventions that we focus on are biased on utilizing the collection and analysis of qualitative and quantitative data in national advocates around access to quality health services. So basically our, our desire as an organization is to assist our government to meet its objective of uh, 
realizing the impact of these health programs at national, district, ward, and uh, even at the global level. And I think I'll just also mention that as an organization, we are a co-convener of what is called Act 2030, which is a, a youth-led social action initiative, which engages young people, including young key populations, uh, on issues around SDGs and accountability. Um, going into, so um, Gemma, sorry, I know you are recording. We'll, we'll, we'll come to it. We'll, we'll edit the the video, right? So I wanted to because we had assigned Casper to lead with the background of the of the Simbautan, and then I'll feed in. Great. Let's let's each introduce ourselves and say yeah, say a little bit about our role in the organization, and then we can talk about the project. Great idea. Otilia, you look, you're next on my list. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us about who you're working with, um, yeah, and what you're passionate about. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Otilia Chinyani. I'm a program officer at Katsu Sisterhood, and I'm also coordinating the Simbao Tano project. So um, just to share a brief um, background about Katsu Sisterhood. So Katsu Sisterhood is a young women organization that primarily focuses on um, attainment of sexual and reproductive health and rights uh, by all girls and women in Zimbabwe. So we create safe spaces for women and girls to organize um, around their sexual and reproductive health issues. And from those spaces, um, we identify the challenges that women and girls face. And then those are the issues that we spearhead at different advocacy level platforms. So some of the issues can be addressed at local level, some at community, at district, and national level. We also believe in building the urgency and skills of adolescent girls and young women to actually stand up for the changes which they want to see. Um, as an organization, we do not stand by voice of the voiceless, but we believe that girls and women should find their voice to speak um, for the issues that affect them and to actually affect the changes that they want to see for themselves. So um, Katswe um, works with all adolescent girls and young women, including key populations like sex workers. So by virtue of being a girl or a woman, we, we work with them and we build their capacity, we build their knowledge level so that they can actually um, have um, knowledge as well as access um, sexual and reproductive health and rights services. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Atilia. And who is next? Clara, why don't you say hello and tell us about yourself? Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Clara Shinoruma. I'm with Youth Engage. I'm a province officer there. Um, I think I won't delve much into the organizational background. So Charles has already given that background. But I'll just like to say that we also believe in youth-led interventions, like Charles said. We do not believe in speaking on their behalf, uh, just like Katwe. We also believe in those same values, that they have a voice to actually stand up for themselves and speak out on issues that affect them and the change that they want to see. So we like seeing young people being at the forefront when it comes to their health um, and any issues that affect them. Yeah. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Clara. And thanks for being with us. And last but not least, Nadine. Hello. Um, I'm Nadine Sekiwa from Katwe Sisterhood. I'm a, is my mic on? Okay. I'm a projects coordinator and um, I work mainly with the younger girls in tertiary institutions. And just like Atilia was saying, we don't believe in voice of the voiceless, but we give them a platform where they can express their concerns and we build on that. We teach them to speak out more and um, access all their sexual reproductive health rights, get more knowledge on that. And we also work a lot with them on feminism issues and human rights issues. Until I said a lot more on that, so I'll leave it at that. Wonderful. So you can see we have the best team possible to implement this project. So, so it's a partnership between the four organizations. Now, if I can go back to you, Atilia, maybe you can tell us more about the Simbo, Simbo Utenu project. What is it trying to achieve? What is it about? Maybe you can give us some background uh, as Catsway Sisterhood, as one of the implementers. 
Um, thank you, Gemma. I think you had already spoken about the context in which Zimbabweans, um, adolescent girls and young women are. And just to add on to the fact that looking at HIV prevalence in Zimbabwe, it's highly prevalent among women in general. And then looking at adolescent girls, it's uh, twice as much as for adolescent girls compared to uh, adolescent boys. So Sembotano as a project seeks to respond to the um, high prevalence rate of HIV amongst adolescents, especially looking at adolescent girls and young women in itself. Um, so as a project, um, I can translate Sembotano is one of our vernacular languages which translate to English as strength or power in health. So what we seek to achieve is uh, the promotion of health amongst adolescents and young people uh, through um, equipping them with the knowledge around their health, um, looking at HIV, also incorporating issues to do with sexual, um, sexual reproductive health and rights and sexual and gender-based violence. So some of the barriers that adolescents and young people face um, in terms of accessing services starts from the surface of looking at um, limitation in terms of knowledge. So that's the first layer in which we want to look at. Do they have enough information? We want to give them the information to build that demand for them to want to access the services. Then there's the layer of knowledge. Then from there, we want them to then access the services in itself. So um, from my experience uh, and from the processes that we're involved in, I think one of my colleagues will speak to length about it. Uh, there's limitation in terms of adolescents and young people accessing sexual and reproductive health and rights. Some of the reasons being maybe attitudes of service providers, issues of self-stigma amongst the adolescents themselves. What if I try to stick the service and this happens. So we're looking at addressing all these barriers that limit um, adolescents and young people's access to sexual and reproductive health and rights, as well as sexual and gender-based violence services. Um, then looking at our society, how we are socialized as a people, um, there are myths and misconceptions, as well as um, issues to do with negative social norms that actually uh, make uh, conversations around sex taboo. So our young people are living in a, in, a, in a situation where the information that they have, they rely from the internet or from their peers. And some of the information is not comprehensive and some of it is actually not true. So we want to actually address those negative social norms um, that, um, that fuel violence, that also limit engagements with young people around sexual and reproductive health and rights, around issues of reporting cases of violence in the event that they face it. So Simbotano is a project, uh, we're primarily targeting adolescent girls and young women and uh, youth in general to ensure that they have adequate knowledge we do the, with the perceptions we do with negative social norms. And we'll also be working with, um, we, we, we want to leave no one behind in this approach because our approach is a gender transformative approach and that can only happen if we engage everyone at the different levels. Yes, the vulnerability amongst adolescents and young women is high, adolescent girls and young women is high, but then we also believe that if we engage young men, if we engage uh, older men as well in this approach, the change that we want to see will be transformative. So we'll be working with everyone. We'll also be working with parents. We'll be working with community leadership to ensure that we address all these barriers and they also um, champions of ensuring that sexual and reproductive health amongst young people is achieved. So um, I'll hand it over to Charles who will speak to what we're expecting to come out of Simbautano. But before Charles goes, so we'll be doing, we'll be implementing this project in four districts in Zimbabwe, Goromonzi, Mazoe, Umguza, and Seke. And looking at uh, the districts in Zimbabwe, these are districts where in terms of HIV prevalence, HIV prevalence is high. STIs are high, issues of child marriages, teenage, teenage pregnancies, or even sex ed, those are hot spot districts within Zimbabwe. So we'll be working in those four districts. And from the four districts, we then looked at what level, now looking at the district level, we selected wards which are also hotspot wards where these issues are very prevalent and we want to be working with those um, wards. Some of them are mining communities, some of them are uh, farming communities. Um, so you see that all these issues, the HIV prevalence and the other issues like which I spoke of earlier, are very prevalent in those areas. So those are the words we'll be um, targeting as well. So Charles can speak to the what we hope to achieve from Simbao Town as a project. 
Yes. Uh, so thank you, thank you so much, uh, Otilia, for for that uh, for that background. And, and and I think the question that most that people are probably asking now is, so how are these guys going to be working together? They they've heard that you know there is ICASO, there's ICAD, there's Youth Engage, then there's CAFE. But how is this project going to be implemented? So I think in I think briefly I'll I'll just share that I think ours our project this project is very unique in the sense that um, it's going to be implemented through a collaboration involving the two organizations in Canada ICASO and, and ICAT which have been mentioned as well as Youth Engage and Casco Sisterhood uh, in Zimbabwe. So I think our role is. Uh, Youth Engage and, and Casper Sisterhood is that because of our expense, extensive experience, you know, working with young and vulnerable populations on, on the issues of human rights and health, and more specifically, SRHR, we have the experience and we, we understand the context that we are in. Um, what's even more exciting is that ICASO and, and ICAT are bringing technical expertise the resources, the tools, you know, to support our work. So I think in terms of the issues that are going to be addressed by the Sumba Otano project. So we have the demand side. We also have the supply side. We also have the structural side. Those are issues that we feel needs to be addressed as we implement the Sumba Otano project. So when it, as it comes to demand side, I think our project seeks to address the demand side of, of health service delivery in the priority districts that have been mentioned by Otilia. Uh, by, you know, in the, what, what we seek to do in the districts is to address the systematic barriers, including the social cultural norms, and community structures that impede access and utilization of services, especially for vulnerable population. And I think when it comes to the supply side, we are looking at uh, addressing the structural barriers to equitable access to SRHR services, for example. And then I think on the third one, the structural side is, uh, we are looking at also strengthening the health and governance systems to support the delivery of quality responsive SRHR and HIV services for adolescent girls and young women. I think as, as, uh, the, as the four organizations, we also envision that the project will influence policies at the district, at national level, with lessons learned and best practices, which hopefully will be shared even beyond Zimbabwe. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much for that overview. Um, I see Talent is, has joined us as well. Talent, do you want to say a few words? Do you want to say hello and just add to what, to what you've heard your colleagues say uh, about the Simbo Tenu project? I think she's with us. Yes, thank you, colleagues. Um, I think we have a great opportunity through the project that we are implementing in collaboration with Youth Engage, ICAD and ICASO to strengthen young people's understanding of sexual and reproductive health and rights and the linkage to HIV. You know in Zimbabwe, the HIV prevalence rates among the youth is quite alarming, and more specifically among young girls um, aged between 15 to 24. It about three, it's about three times higher than in the counterparts. So you also um, understand that our initiative really places gender norms, harmful gender norms at their core, as we try to use this entry point to um, support communities articulate harmful uh, social norms in order to address them. We are working with stakeholders uh, at different levels and one of the key stakeholders that we feel will be working with uh, closely are the parents who have a responsibility to socialize and support young people who may decide to to access uh, services. Charles did talk about uh, structural barriers. Part one key component of this initiative is going to be advocacy. So through the two methodologies that we are employing, 
uh, particular, they are called uh, the Pachota methodology as well as the adolescence accountability framework. Mm. We will support young people to begin to engage communities in advoc through advocacy, uh, creation of advocacy platforms. So young people will begin to engage stakeholders at the local level, identifying issues at the local level and beginning to say, how do we resolve some of the barriers to access? And then we anticipate that we'll escalate this ad advocacy level to national level because we, we do have a lot of progressive policies but that are not implemented. For example, adolescents in Zimbabwe are expected to access um, contraceptives or reproductive health services on demand. That's what the uh, Minister of Health uh, has put in place. There's a procedure that mandates health service providers to be able to do that. However, you may find, as, as was um, alluded to earlier by my colleagues, there are some service providers who then don't allow for that, for, for adolescents to access reproductive health. So there is need then to continuously be engaging in advocacy, but in advocacy process that is youth-led. There are also other uh, policy issues that we feel um, need to be tackled. So, for example, the child marriage, um, policies on child marriage. Yes, we do have a constitutional provision that forbids marriage of children below the age of 18. However, there is a disconnect between what is in the our constitution and what is in our current laws. And you know that child marriage is actually fuel uh, teen pregnancies, STIs, and HIV, and hence it is in our interest to ensure that our government can quickly realign laws on child marriage to the new constitution. So we are very excited that uh, we are going into a season that will allow young people to mobilize, organize, and engage policymakers towards legal reform. And of course, we'll be talking about COVID-19. Um, if you look at the communities that we're targeting, they're mainly low-income communities where, because of the housing situation, social distancing measures remain a problem, where, yes, the messaging is saying people have to wash their hands thoroughly with soap and water, but these are communities where they've limited access to soap and water, where young people are saying, you know, our sources of livelihoods have been um, affected by the, the lockdown that has been... Uh, persistent and, and they are, most of them are resorting to risky activities such as sex work um, as they try to fend some of the young adolescents and young people are talking about actually young mothers, they're teen mothers and some of them are engaging in, in, in they're saying their bodies for survival um, and, and, and some of them who are, because we don't want in Zimbabwe, we, 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 we cannot name a, a child uh, a sex worker, they are not supposed to be working so I'm using the term um, they're being sexually exploited for survival. So these are issues that we would like to address through the Simbao Tunnel Project, um, but also push, you know, invite other partners to the table so that they attend to some gaps that we recognize that are not necessarily catered for uh, under our project. And those would include maybe economic empowerment activities, but also uh, supporting these young people to cope with the pressures that have been put about by the health crisis. Uh, that is induced by the COVID-19. Awesome. This sounds like it's going to be a really successful project. The collaborative approach and the methodologies are very exciting. I can't wait to see what happens. It's very innovative, I think. Like, we're really trying to see if we can, you know, bring all corners of the globe together, all different kinds of, um, of approaches. So that's very exciting. And I also really like what you say about we're not being a voice for the voiceless. These young girls have voices and let's, let's help them to use their voices. I really like that, that approach. Um, it's a really wonderful kind of ethos for the project. So before we close, I just want to give each one of you, is there any last call to action? What do you want the attendees of the AIDS conference to know about Zimbabwe, about young women, about Simba Tano? What, what would you say to them in one sentence? What would be your call to action? Anyone have an idea? So I'll go first. And I think my call to action to the um, global community is that, yes, we are in a health crisis uh, induced by COVID-19. However, the needs and sensibilities of young people on our continent remain the same. They need to be supported to be able to protect themselves from exploitation, sexual exploitation, 
all forms of abuse that depend their vulnerabilities to HIV infections. And for young people who are HIV positive, uh, we have seen lockdowns across the world. We need for, need for partners to ensure that young people are supported so that they are able to adhere to their treatment. Issues of mental health need to be um, continuously, you know, we should be paying attention to that because this current health crisis does not mean an end to the other crises that young people have always faced. So we should rally behind our youths and support them transition safely into adulthood. Awesome. Anyone else have any last words for our audience? I think, I think it's, it's, it's very important to always ensure that, uh, I mean, young people, I think when, when we are implementing, uh, we need to ensure that at least we, we use the three length approach of, of AGY, AGYW programming. For a long time, I mean, AGYW and young people have just been seen as beneficiaries of projects. And I think that actually should stop. We need to ensure that AGYW and young people are on the table. And they, they are just not on the table because we know there are certain uh, institutions that bring young people on the table, but then deny them the chance to also voice their, their issues. So we need to ensure that, yes, we give them that opportunity to be on the table, but also make sure that we also give them vast opportunities to ensure that they express themselves and then that they also inform programming as strategic advisors. Fantastic. Well, I can't wait to see, I can't wait to hear these empowered voices um, as a result of your work. And it's, it's a very exciting project. So I want to thank everyone for what they've shared here today. Um, it, it really is going to be a transformative, empowering uh, investment and, and I really I think it sounds like it's going to make a difference in a lot of young women's lives. So congratulations to the team who's been leading on this um, and we'll have a chance now for some questions with the team that's here um, so we can ask questions in the chat box and they can respond to you um, and keep in touch with us. Keep in touch with ICASO, ICAD, Youth Engage and Katsue Sisterhood as we implement uh, Simba Utano. Thanks everybody. Thank you, everybody.